I've been in the middle of a million and one renovations, which pretty much means my house feels like it's been in a shambles. I know things have to get worse sometimes before they can get better, but I'm tired of feeling like everywhere I turn is a mess. So we're taking a break from all of the renovations so that we can make a little something pretty here in the house. And since it's almost, I don't know, the end of September, it is absolutely beyond time to decorate for fall. We're gonna make something out of this, I promise. <laughs> I have had a gathering of fall slash Halloween decor laid out on our dining table for honestly weeks now. Picked up some darling little pumpkins and a couple big ones for the front porch. I got these beautiful fall flowers. I even spray painted this old pumpkin to make it feel fresh and new again. It's time to make something out of this pile. Beautiful linens that I bought last year. New base for our design little pumpkin that Kelly thinks is a dog toy. We're gonna have to keep that hidden from her. I picked up some beautiful candles, candle holders, pulled out the black and anything that kind of fit the vibe, some antique brass, pine cones, bridging all the fall, and of course the spooky stuff. A couple things I couldn't wait to put out. This little pumpkin candle. We've actually burned it a little bit and it is oof, so good. These adorable little pumpkins that actually I've had for a million years that just recently got back from my mom. I picked up some new art while traveling recently and I'm absolutely in love with this moody still life. And overall, I just wanna do some different things here in the dining room. It's time to clear off the dining table clean the table itself, iron the new tablecloth, get that in place, and just generally try to take as much as I can out of the room. I'm even considering taking down all the artwork. I just really want to do something completely different in here. Just take it in a new direction. I'm just going to take all the accessories out. I totally bought these super adorable ghost candles on my birthday trip to Ikea. Found these at the thrift shop with my grandma, but don't they look a little bit large? I could resist a couple of Disney things, especially when the stores have so many good things right now. I found this little candle holder and I'm in love with it. These amazing, oops. <laughs> These amazing pine cone branches are out of this world. They are from Pottery Barn last year. I'm in love with them. They actually still have the tags on them. I'll try to link them if I can, you guys, but I'm not sure if they're still available. I know you can find other similar items at local craft stores. And I find these are beautiful starting around the early fall season, September. Just continue restyling these in different vessels throughout the winter, well into the new year. Instead of doing holiday decorating, I do have a fair amount of like Halloween specific stuff because it's my favorite holiday. But for the most part, I try to pursue seasonal decorating. That means instead of buying Halloween specific, Thanksgiving specific, Christmas specific stuff, a lot of it, I just try to do fall decor, winter decor. And then I'm trying to incorporate some lighter items for spring, summer. So maybe spring, summer is like one season. I don't want to have 16 changes of decor every year. Just a couple quick pillow switches, blanket switches, table decor, front porch decor makes a huge difference. You don't have to have holiday stuff everywhere. Or even just transitioning the color story into more fall or winter zone, spring and summer. You could even just do two. You could do fall, winter, spring, summer. Case in point, fall, winter, and then another option might be spring, summer. Oh, there are so many ways to do it. Let me know how do you organize your decor? How do you prevent over purchasing? I'm no like hardcore minimalist, but being somewhat minimalist in your approach to designing your home for different seasons. I'm still trying to figure out what to do with this cutie little chair, but these little jars are so cute. I found them in that little bullseye's playground section of Target. I'll link them down below if I can, but they're little sort of apothecary jars for Halloween. And I figured this wasn't terrible because I think they were like $3 a piece. What I didn't realize in the store, actually, I was so focused on getting the ones with the best looking labels on them. They light up. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but look how cool it lights up and then they actually change color. a ton 
of different art, took everything that was on the walls, off the walls. I'm just itching to paint this room now, but I'm gonna try to pause renovation brain and just focus on the decorating for today and see what we can do that would also be renter friendly in the case that you might be in a rental. After buying the wrong size tablecloth, not once, but two times, Third time's the charm. I think I finally got the right one. I also found this extended length runner. I think it's gonna work really nicely with the, all the black accents that we're doing. While I was in Spokane visiting my family, my mom and I went vintage shopping, coming up on the vlog channel very soon. While we were there, I found these absolutely beautiful Liberty Blue Made in England Independence Hall plates. I'm in the hunt right now for blue and white pottery, a little bit, you know, vintage-y. I just love the look in general. In Spokane, we found two of these plates, and today, while it was not thrifting, I can't believe it, I found two more. <laughs> Identical. And they were only $7.99, so I'm so excited. Now I have a full set of four. Now I can actually switch my plan from hanging them on the wall to actually using them on the table. of lightning, pouring rain, crescent moon has taken itself far away to lay down, one more lazy dream. It's the next day and I am so excited. I laid out all these blue and white plates and the copper pieces that I found. These flowers are looking so beautiful. Starting to piece together a little bit of the styling. I'm really enjoying this for the season. And I'm still trying to pull together and grouping for the dining room gallery wall. I've been wanting to replace these grommet style curtains in the dining room for quite some time. They're actually remnants from our rental house. I'm trying something new with a beige drape. They're creating a little bit more warmth and coziness for the fall vibes that I'm looking for. Usually drapery fabrics are of a heavier weight, so steaming them works out great. I absolutely love this corded steamer. It gets so hot and it does such fantastic work for a long period of time if you're doing a big job. I'll link it down below. But when it comes to table linens, I'm old school and love to hit the ironing board. Although I love this table, the top has a few flaws, so it's really fun to change things up with a tablecloth. For $20, I was able to completely change the space, creating a soft and cozy beigey base for our fall styling. I love using table runners, either layered together or over a tablecloth like this. Now we're on to table settings and I'm starting with these black woven placemats. Adding our beautiful flowers for a little height and color, I'm very excited to set the table with my new blue and white pottery. White pumpkins, a little marble lion, felt ferocious. I'm still in love with these plaid napkins like the day I bought them. I love how the colors tie in both the warm tones and the cool tones in one beautiful print. We have some more things to layer in, but it's really coming together. I can't seem to figure out why, but for some reason, this gallery wall is not coming together the way they typically do for me. So although I'm pretty good at improvising and that's generally where I find my sweet spot, that's what happened in the office and countless others, I feel like this one, especially with the nature of some of the pieces that I've selected, just needs a little bit more forethought and planning. So I'm going back to basics here. I'm gonna be using this brown craft paper to trace the shape and where the nail needs to go for each of the pieces I might be using in the gallery wall, big and small. Then with painter's tape, I'm gonna arrange them, rearrange them until I figure out a placement on the wall that brings me all the joy and happiness that this is supposed to bring. Once you cut them out, sometimes the pages are way too curly to be useful, so try using a warm iron to flatten them. Hang one focal piece of artwork at the center at the height that you want it, and that way you can use the paper cutouts to build everything else around it. 
I find generally I'm drawn to symmetry, but some people love the asymmetrical look. It's really about what looks great to your eye. Have fun, play around with it until you find a grouping that you really like. Try to place artwork two to three inches apart from each other, but feel free to break the rules and play around with it a bit. Sometimes I like to throw in a four to five inch gap just to keep things interesting. And after a lot of trial and error, I think I finally figured out a layout that I like. Now I have a really exciting feature wall in this space that's gonna give it a whole new life. <laughs> things up especially in a gallery wall you're trying to line up all these different pieces different sizes different shapes you have your vision and you want to execute it well so that things are constantly moving and getting off track and off balance one thing I find obviously is using a level throughout the process you've seen me use it about a billion times today the other one little rubber dots that essentially grab onto the wall and prevent the picture from tipping back and forth and should help it stay in place. Put it on the back, bottom two corners. That's what's gonna be resting against the wall most. Don't need to put them on the top because the top usually floats just a hair off the wall, but you wel you're welcome to if you think that's best for your piece, you know it best. If you have hardware on the side, sometimes getting a little felt pad, like you might put on the foot of a chair, for example, that can prevent it from scratching the wall too. more spookiness to our dining room with these witch hats and had some fun entertainment i.e my puppy howling along with fire engines while i was stringing them up what do you think bud do you need a little hat for the holiday <laughs> With the dining room finally finished, I'm excited to move on to some fun changes in the living room. I feel like the chair with the ottoman is going to make more sense here, and then the swivel might make more sense there, just spatially. I've been dreaming of barrel back swivel armchairs for our living room for quite some time and could not believe my eyes when I found this one brand new with the tags on $200 off retail at my local thrift shop. I cannot wait to see what this looks like in our living room. We're going to do the boot play over here. Excited to try this one over here. <laughs> it's not hard to move. I couldn't resist pulling this little pillow out that I plan to style in here. Look how pretty it looks on the chair. What do you think, Pop? Oh, you better not lick the chair. Oh, it's pretty. Ooh, it's good, and then it swivels. <sighs> Kelly, what do we think? Oh, I'm so excited. All right, the inaugural sitting. What do you think, bud? But with the TVs on, like, oh my gosh, I am so enjoying whatever it is we're watching. And then, oh my gosh, look at us. We are having a chat and I'm so focused on you. Kelly, you should go sit on the sofa so I can like fake chat. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> it is one of those kind of microfiber chairs though, so you have to kind of like, you know, brush it from time to time. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I found this at the Goodwill. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm just like enjoying this for a second. It is so pretty. <laughs> Stop looking in the chair. Stop it. Oh my gosh. I'm in love with that new swivel chair. <laughs> and here comes the big play chair. <sighs> not heavy at all. No, it's not heavy. It's just awkward, you know? Okay, she's always looking in this room, but I feel like it's a new era for her. A new era of being vacuumed for sure. Man, dogs. I swear I could vacuum every day and find more hair. Actually, I do vacuum every day and I do find more hair. I am considering... <sighs> 
but I do kind of like this chair on an angle. I'm uncertain about this like very scandy side table being in here. I feel like it fits more in the den. The paper artwork that's above the fireplace right now, I bought that for the den. I think it needs to go back to its original home. Mm -hmm. Definitely give some height to this side of the room. Doesn't bang into my head when I sit down. This is cute. Things are looking great in the dining room, coming together in the living room now. And it's time to add a few more overtly spooky details, including my new favorite spooky tree. This one is super easy. LED lights are already in the branches. You just plug it in. I just put it into this large basket that I had in the garage in my little decor stash. You just have to make sure to measure the base of your tree before you go looking for a basket so that it fits. I thought I had one that was perfect and I had to scale up just a little bit. This one doesn't have a remote but it's got a little box here. It can go orange and purple blinking, solid orange, solid purple. I think we're gonna leave it purple for now. Since the basket part is a little empty and awkward down here, I think I'm gonna make this feel a little bit more intentional. All right, so we've got our basket, a couple beach towels, and this tub of fall branches that I had just hiding out in the garage. These particular branches, I just didn't have a place for this year. Previously, I did like a huge display of them, so I have a ton of them. They were really cost-effective. I actually got them at my local grocery store floral department. They're all balled up, but I was thinking, add a little bit of color, hide that empty basket. We'll just kind of rumple up the towels just to fill some of the space. That'll create like a little base for it. They're bendy. See if we can sort of place them almost like a wreath, like a round in a circle. I figure it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it disguises the towel and just makes the basket feel more full. Kind of layering it, but letting this leaf part pop out a little so it doesn't feel totally empty in there. I also have these, but I don't know if that would be too much. Flash how exactly I was put them in. Oh, and I can tuck them within the towel. Just adds like another little layer to it. Brought this little drawing back in here. I didn't end up using it in the dining room. It's kind of cute here. Just to add another little layer to this. Okay, I have one more thing for this spot. More pumpkins. We'll use one of these little pumpkins to kind of help disguise the cord. Tall one. Time to add some bats. What's nice about a glass front picture like this is that I can easily stick those little bats even to the picture, unlike the painting on the other wall. Plus, Travis pointed out that it's a little bit more visible from the door for trick-or-treaters on Halloween, so I think this is probably a good spot to start. There's so many bats in this set though. I think it came with like 200 or something nuts, so we might have extras to play somewhere else. at a done point with the dining room and living room. A little spooky fall decorating makeover. Without further ado, let's take the final tour of these two spaces. In three, two, one.
much for watching today's video. I am so excited that we took a break from construction, DIYs, renovations, and focused a little bit on beautifying our space. It is feeling fresh for fall, but it's definitely bringing me so much joy to see all my little spooky details. Plus, I love that everything is going to roll right over into Thanksgiving, and then we'll be ready to decorate for Christmas. Like and subscribe, hit that little notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. I'll be back next week with the next chapter of our fall refresh as we head out to the front porch. Until then, check out this major renovation we have going on in our hallway makeover next episode coming very soon. I'll see you in that video. Bye, my friends.